Kevin, thanks for joining, taking the time for joining me. Really appreciate it. No problem, man. Yeah. So, just curious, how did how did you get started in the craft uh, craft beer brewing business? Um, so, I was actually in the music business first. Um, I was a guitar player and um, you know guy trying to make it in the business up in Atlanta in the early two thousands. Um, ended up you know kind of traveling around the southeast, in and out of you know trying to make money playing music and, and, and not have to go get a job job, if, if you know what I mean. And um, ended up uh, meeting and connecting with one of the executive producers of uh, Voodoo Fest, uh, who lived in New, uh, Atlanta, decided that, you know, a career in the music business was something I was more interested in. And, um, and, and uh, you know, playing music was just, I wanted to return that back to being a hobby and something I enjoyed instead of something that stressed me out, you know, um, trying to make money at it. So, Long story short, we, I, I got into the music business for about you know, 10, 11, 12 years, um, and I moved back to Tampa um, not long after a couple, uh, not long after the brewing business had taken off here. So I kind of was exposed to, to a completely changed craft brewing industry in my hometown of Tampa. And so I, it, it occurred to me, you know, to try to brand, you know, with my knowledge of, of and background in the music industry, it occurred to me that, you know, artists want wanted to would want to make other revenue streams. And, you know, craft beer and music go together. A lot of brewers are musicians. Uh a lot of, you know, musicians and fans drink beer. So it made sense to try to brand those two things together. I knew that the artists or a certain number of artists would 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 like to have their name on a beer and be a part of something like that. And and you know, as opposed to me going and becoming a craft brewer and going to brewing, you know, going and getting my degree in brewing, if you will, or whatever, I partnered with some other guys in the business who already were doing that, who already were, you know, established in the brewing industry. Uh, those were the guys over at Cigar City Brewing in Tampa. They helped us get started. Joey Redner and his whole company helped us get off the ground back in 2012. So long story short, it was my background in the music industry that so I thought to myself, let's try to make beers with bands. And I partnered with a brewing company who was already doing a reputable job. And I partnered with bands who were already established in the industry. And that's how Rock Brothers started. So you've, so you've always kind of been around rock music. I mean, and music in general. Always, always, yeah. Since I left, since I left, um, I moved to Atlanta in 2001. Um, and I moved back to Tampa in like 2009 or 10. So I, I had been in the music business um, somewhere in and around the music business those 10 years from artist management to tour management to trying to have a, a record label. I and mean, I've done, I've done every bit of it to, to festival and concert production, which I'm doing right now. I'm in the middle of my um, annual festival that we have every president's day weekend here in Tampa called uh, Wig Fest. And uh, so I'm in the middle of that as we speak. So I've never stopped doing um, the stuff I love about music. Um, just, we, we attached a beer to it. And now Rock Brothers has a, you know, a brewery, a tasting room, cocktail bar, and a concert venue all in one facility. So it's kind of all one big happy thing right now. And instead of just a concept, it's, it's visually what we always wanted it to be. So Very cool. Very cool. I, I really like the name Rock Brothers, too. I mean, you have the kind of the obvious musical association there. Um, but can you tell me a little bit about how you came up with the name and kind of uh, the genesis of it? <clears throat> um. So that's funny. Uh, yeah, this is so. In 2006, <laughs> uh, bringing this back full circle, um, I had a. I, I tried to do this same type of company um, with coffee. I had a. I worked, was working with a band named Sister Hazel, um, out of Gainesville, Florida. Uh, you may have heard of those guys, and uh, we had a company that was making ba coffees with bands. And it was, they were the first one we made and it was called Hawk Brother, J-W-K. And it was themed around like the old, you know, 1920s and 30s guys with top hats. And it just looked like a family business, Hawk Brothers. And it had this cool branding and, and it was the coffee was Sister Hazelnut Coffee. And, and it just didn't work. I mean, it, the coffee was great. We sold some coffee, but it just, it, it, it just wasn't, it just didn't work with, with coffee as the vehicle. Um, and that's where the idea happened originally. And then when I came back to Tampa, it became, I, I figured out that beer was the right vehicle 
for that type of business. And, and Rock Brothers, oddly enough, <laughs> was just something that sounded like hawk. It just, does that make sense? Like it just, it, 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 Rock Brothers just became out of that. I liked how that sounded and I liked how it sounded before. And Rock was the word that just tied it together musically. Um, and it's just, it kind of, I, maybe it was a subliminal back of my mind Hawk Brothers reference, but that, that's where that kind of came from. And then it just made sense. Oh, yeah, absolutely. With, I think it's a great name. Side. It's a funny little backstory to, to where that phrase came from. You know, Hawk, Rock, it's just kind of a similarity, you know. <laughs> yeah, it kind of flows off the tongue really well. And it's, I think yeah. it's a great name. Well, thanks, man. So you, you guys have done a lot of, you know, collaborations with musicians, JJ Gray, uh, you know, Hootie and the Blowfish and 311 to name a few. Can you kind of tell me a little bit about how these collaborations kind of came about? Yeah. So when the idea first surfaced, obviously everyone had said, you know, when I first went to Joey Redner at Cigar City Brewing. Um, and you got to realize something at that time, this was in 2000, uh, shoot 10 or uh, 10, maybe 11, I have to look back, 2010 or 11, I first met with Joey Redner, and um, he didn't know me from anybody. Um, he had just started Cigar City Brewing a couple of years prior. At the time, they were, they were, you know, in their, in, I would say in their infancy, but but they were exploding. I mean, they were the biggest thing. They, they brought, they put Florida on the, on the mark, on, on the map for craft beer. And I went to them, and I think he had – the first thing out of his mouth was he goes, I love this idea. I love what this is about. And just like everyone else had said, you know, but you have to get the bands on board. That's all on you. He goes, if you can get the bands on board, I'm in. I, I just don't know that you can or, or hopefully you can, you know, kind of a thing. And that's what everyone's concern was, how, how to get the bands on board on a, on a new company that has no history, you know, and you're going after these bands that are established – sometimes some of them 15, 20, 25 years, you know, why are they partnering with an upstart? Um, so I took that as a challenge and, and went out and about and tried to figure out how to get it done. And I knew I had connections in the industry, but at the same time, I didn't, I didn't know how I could pull the trigger being a new company, if that makes sense. So I made some calls. I got some stuff done. I met with the first band we met with was uh, OAR and uh, flew to New York, met with them in their offices they loved the idea, uh, really loved it. We, we spent about three or four months, you know, going through the process. They ended up coming down and playing uh, Tropicana Field for one of the Tampa Bay Rays games. We, they, they came over to Cigar City. We met in the conference room. Everyone was on board. Um, Joey Redner was impressed because OER is sitting in his office, you know, we're, you know, challenge accepted kind of thing, and the band showed up, you know. So, um it ended up not working out with OAR because they had a, a sponsorship deal or something that they couldn't, you know, breach on with another beer company. So we just moved on to a different band. We still talked to them. Everything's cool. Uh, just didn't work out that year. But it, the, it proved the, the concept that we could get a hold of these of, of these bands and, and they were interested. So what we decided to do after that was start with a small local band. We started with um, a band called Have Gun Will Travel. We did that on purpose because in the spirit of local in the spirit of craft beer, we wanted to just kick off the company with a local independent, you know, Tampa based band. So we did that, kicked off the beer, started selling some product. Um, second band we signed was JJ Gray and Mofro. Um, JJ was a, is a, is a powerhouse, you know, is a, a touring act internationally, but you know, it, you know, isn't, you know, hooting the blowfish as far as a household name, you know, you know? Um, so it was a, it was a, it was a good signing. It was it was a, a national act stamp, if you will, on our company, but it wasn't you know you know Bruce Springsteen, right? So um, the next band we signed, believe it or not, was uh, Hooting the Blowfish. That happened. Um, you know, let me back up a second. JJ really, you asked how it came together. JJ really cared about the fact that we were local. Cared about the fact that he was a national act and we were local, and he was he was helping us to some degree. He knew that he was partnering with some guys who really cared about what they were doing, and he wanted to support that, and that meant a lot to him, and that was really cool. Right. Uh, what made me think about that? What made me think about that was Hootie did the same thing, which is astounding to me when when they said yes because they are they're gigantic. You know, they 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 were just a mass presence. Everyone knows the name, whether they like the band or not. They know who they are. And for Hootie and the Blowfish to sign a deal with us um, to do a beer as our third artist, when we were still a tiny, 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 and we are still tiny, 
but we, we, we didn't even have a building. We didn't have a brewery. We didn't have uh, anything we have right now. Um, we were just in, 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 our, in our very infancy. And they signed a deal with us for the same reason, you know, that, that they care, that we cared about what we were doing. I mean, who knew Blowfish could have easily signed a deal with a major, major beer, beer company and put out a nationwide release. They just, that's not what they were about anymore. They, right. they wanted to support guys, you know, Darius Rucker and Mark Bryan both told me, like, you're doing right now what we did when we were hustling records in the late 80s at colleges. Like, and we believe, we remember the guys that supported us when we were starting and that's what we, we want to support you. And that's what they said. And that was cool as hell. I'll never forget it. You know, um, for sure. and for now, sure. they're back, now, now, now they're back on a world tour, you know, Hootie's going out on a world tour this summer and we, you know, we can't give them, we can't, we don't distribute nationally. We can't even support them nationally and they're still with us, you know? So um, we signed them in 2016, um, 2015, 2016. And then uh, 311 came after that. Uh, Umphreys McGee, I'm sorry, was in, in the middle there. Um, uh, who's a great group of guys, another another national act, but, but more like J.J. Gray, more that regional underground, you know, indie underground play. Um, but just badass guys, tremendous, tremendous musicians. I mean, tremendous. Um, same thing. Love the story. Love what we're about. Um, really wanted to be behind a good product. Um, then it was 311 after that. And I thought, you know, they were, believe it or not, they were a cold call. Um, 311 Amber Ale just made sense, you know, um, without being a gimmick. We didn't want it to, it had to be a good quality beer, but what else, what else would you do? You have to do an Amber with them, you know? Yeah. Um, so we did that as our flagship, but to their credit, you know, they said like, look, we love that song. You know, that song was, was a huge thing for our careers and stuff like that, because we want to, we don't want to hang our hat on this beer business with just that beer. We want to be really creative and do some other things. And I said, hell yeah, I mean, it's great. So we have the most beers with any artist we have with them. We have three beers with them right now. And two of them are seasonals. And the one of them is our top selling beer. And it's because Peanut and SA really got creative and, and you know, helped us hone in what flavor profiles they were looking for and what, um, you know, we made some really powerful stuff with them. Um, and so, yeah, it's just, it all kind of... It, we met these bands some through connections I had had in the industry and some cold calls. So it's kind of happened all um, different ways. Then once we had all these artists signed, you know, other people started hearing about us. You know, we have a project we're working on with Michael Franti. Nothing is announced. Nothing's final, just being clear, but we've met with him on, on several occasions to talk about something. We, we have other artists in the works. We have other beers coming out with artists we already have signed. So, um, it's just, it's just going to grow organically from here with people that want to be involved because we don't promise people riches and wealth from this project year one. We promise people a quality, good, fun project that we can hopefully make some money on together. You know, that's kind of how it always gets approached and we don't over promise and we try not to under deliver. So. Hey, well, Kevin, I think it's really cool what you're doing, especially that, you know, the music and craft beer uh, concept. Um, we, we, we do a podcast here called the brew tune podcast where we pair bands with beers. So, uh, definitely on board with you and think it's a really cool concept. Just wanted to jump into the, the, the 311 Amber Ale. I actually have one here, uh, in my hands. I just, I love this beer. I think it's fantastic. Uh, so, you know, job well done. Had a few questions on it though. Um, you know, um, when you guys were coming up with the recipe, was that kind of like a, like, like kind of collaborated with, you know, you made mention of like SA coming up with some ideas, but was it, was it you or Nebraska brewing or cigar, you know, city, like who was kind yeah. of, how did that come about? Well, so a lot of these recipes that I can tell you, um, Hootie, 311, uh, JJ Gray, our first four or five beers, um, were written with cigar city and a collaborative brewery, um, usually regionally where the artist was from. That's the reason we included Nebraska. The reason we included Palmetto in South Carolina was to have a regional tie to the band's home hometown. And it was more of, a, of, a, of an inclusive play, not necessarily like a necessity, but more of a we want to partner with a, a hometown local brewery from the band's hometown. So that's where that came from. But the recipes largely came from 
you know, the band telling us what they liked first in a beer, what, what they liked to drink. And then, you know, secondly, what they thought their fans, you know, would enjoy, um, even down to the setting that they're enjoying it in, you know, um, is, is this a festival beer? Is it a daytime hot in the sun beer? Is it a, you know, all these things come into play. Then we find out that, you know, then, then we bring a, a tasting panel. Um, uh, we, we will sit down with the band and do like, we'll bring like 10 beers that are out in the market. We don't say the name of them, you know, that you, you will have heard of all of them. They're mass marketed ambers. For example, we put them, we do blind, we put them in front of the band. We say on a scale of one, you know, rate these, you know, and they go, Hmm, I liked four, two and nine, the best. So we throw the rest out and we go, what do you like about four, two and nine? Well, I like this, 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 and this. I like the hoppiness of this. I like how I like, you know, it kind of came down to like, this one's soup too light. This one's too heavy. This one's just right. And it was kind of like a not too bitter, not too flavorless, you know, you know, kind of a vibe. So we, then we go to the, to the brewmasters and we say, how do we emulate or make our own version of, you know, not too hoppy, not too light, but rich in flavor, amber, amber pale ale, essentially. And we just get, get the brains you know, get, get the brains of the brewers behind it. And then we, we, we create it. So it comes from the band having a specific idea in mind, even down to the aroma. You know, you can imagine the 311 guys wanted it to be dank, you know, and smelling like, like a bag of weed, you know, <laughs> so, but, but, did, but didn't want it to taste overpowering like a, like a hopped up, you know, nine, you know, eight and a half percent IPA it needed to have that smell, but not that level of alcohol, you know, 5%. Gotcha. So we wanted that 5% beer with a very awesome smell. Well, you know, it's just the process that that's going to the brewers and saying, let's get, let's create that. Let's get that done. Gotcha. Very cool. Um, I'm looking at the, the can here and I love this artwork. It's very striking. Um, I think it really captures the essence of both the beer and the band. And I was just wondering, did Rock Brothers design this artwork or did the band design it? We, uh, we do it. We, everything is collaborative every the everything so we come up with the artwork we we have an art team they have an art team we 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 submitted um i don't know probably 15 designs 10 15 designs collectively and that was the one that was selected you know we we kind of took a vote from band members um and and rock brothers owners we took a vote and that the what what's on the can is the one that won awesome. so there's some other ones i've got a maybe someday we'll release a you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, concept art poster or something, you know, of, of the beer. Cause there's a lot of, a lot of other cool designs I really liked that we just didn't, didn't ultimately select. Gotcha. I also know that you did a, um, the beautiful disaster Imperial IPA. Um, yeah. Where can I find that beer? Cause I really want to try it. Uh, where are, I can actually, I can get, where are you, babe? Where are you at? I'm actually in Virginia. Oh, okay. I can, I have ways I can get you some, but we, it's, it's out of stock. Uh, we, we make it every November 3rd. So 11, three, obviously, uh, the play on the 311 logo. And then the ABV is 11.3%, which we just flip the logo, throw a percent sign on. It was a cool play to fit, you know, fool with their logo like that and have it be relevant to the beer. Um, and, and the release date, we have some product we've set and kept aside from the batch we made in November because it's the 311 cruise is, uh, leaving out of Tampa at the end of this month. So at the cruise pre-party on the 28th, we're having here, uh, Peanut and Essay always come over and do a, like a toast with the fans. So we wanted to make sure we had Beautiful Disaster reserves for the, both the cruise ship and the, the cruise pre-party. So we have some inventory. It's just not for sale right now, but we have it. I can, I can get you some. But we also are releasing um, Essay's product that is coming out. Um, it's debuting on the cruise ship. It's called... Um, I'll be here a while and it's a honey apricot Belgian wit. Awesome. So if you can imagine, if you can imagine like a blue moon with honey and apricot, it's so delicious. Sounds great. So that, that That's debuting as well um, on the 28th of February and then on the, on the cruise. So I can definitely get you some of each of those. Oh, great. That would be great. Um, I know that you, you mentioned that um, above your facility, you have the attic, which is a music venue. Mm -hmm. uh, so is Rock Brothers directly associated with that or how does that kind of work? Yeah. So I mentioned before that I had a music label, a, a record label, that I, it was more of a passion project than trying to be a business. It was called Attic Records. 
Okay. And um, we, we, I still have it. It's in existence. I just haven't done anything with it in the last couple of years. But the attic became we had a uh, became a venue performance space over in downtown St. Petersburg in a in like an old warehouse, it's kind of like a warehouse arts district. And when we realized, okay, this we're, we're opening a venue, we're building a brewery, we're gonna have a cocktail bar, we should move the attic over and, and put a professional venue on you know on top of the brewery. And that's what ended up happening. And since it's, you know, the attic name just worked, it's, it's, it's up, it's upstairs, you know, it, it's old, it's, it's a 125 year old building. It's got wooden rafters and the ceiling is just feels like an attic. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, but it holds 150 people. It's beautiful it's chandeliers, hardwood floors. I and mean, it just feels like a Nashville style listening room where you'd go see, you know, and they do play here. You'd see a Grammy winner on Friday and you might see an up and coming act on Saturday. Gotcha. You know, it's just, that kind of room where you sit, you're in the room with somebody and they're, you're both not going anywhere for a while, you know, it's enjoyable. So that kind of a listening room storyteller vibe, that's, that's the kind of room we have. And then it's uh it feels that way. You know, you, when you think of the attic, you think about storybooks and family heirlooms and stuff stored that you care about, but they're just up there. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so the attic is where those kind of memories happen. And that's kind of another cool part of the story. in my, you know, so the, I feel at least the attic and the, and, and rock brothers facility is located in downtown is it Tampa and the, yeah, it's, it's a, yeah, it's in the historic district of downtown Tampa called Ybor city, which is kind of like our French quarter. Okay. You know, like the new Orleans, it's kind of, if you can imagine, you know, people say French quarter, they don't say new Orleans, you know, in that regard. So it's like Ybor city is, is the historic district of downtown Tampa. Okay. Okay. Great. Cool. Um, so, so what's on the horizon for Rock Brothers? Any any announcements or upcoming uh, new releases for beers? Um, well, our most immediate next beer is the is Essays Belgian Wit that's coming out. Um, that'll be available um, after the cruise publicly here. Um, I've got some other stuff I, I just can't say yet because. I don't want to get in trouble for it, but gotcha. we've got some other beers coming out uh, from artists that we already have on our roster. And somewhere down the road um, in 2019, I don't have a date yet, we will be having, you know, we'll have another beer or two signed with a new artist. I just, again, don't know who, you know, it's once the dotted line is signed, then then I know. I just don't know yet. Um, one big announcement is our brewery comes online um, in less than about six weeks. So, we have been installing our brewery at our facility for the past year and a half. It's just been, you know, filled with delays um, and just problems with the old building and the city of Tampa and various things that, that cause delays. But that'll be going online in about six weeks. So our entire brewing world is going to change when that happens. Um, we're going to have complete freedom to brew what we want, when we want, and get out of the contract brewing world, which is very limiting. Gotcha. Well, hey, Kevin, I think uh, I think you're a true pioneer. I really love what you're doing, and uh, I uh, really appreciate you taking the time to talk, and I wish you uh, the, and your team the best of luck in your future endeavors. Hey, man, I appreciate it. Sorry if my answers were a little long, but uh, no, I uh, appreciate it. And let me know. Email me, do whatever. I'll, uh, I'm happy to get you some get you some product and keep, let's keep in touch. All right. Thank you so much, man. Take care. Yeah, no problem. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel and follow Roadtunes Reviews on Blogger, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And as always, thank you so much for your support.